Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gary Hahnemann, and um, I was the clinical director at the Carroll County Youth Service Bureau for 30 years. And today I have the great privilege of uh, spending some time talking with Lynn Davis, who was the executive director at the Carroll County Youth Service Bureau for almost uh, 40 years or exactly 40 years. Is that right, Lynn? Yes. Right. Yeah. So we plan to have uh, an informal conversation with each other this afternoon, talking about kind of the beginnings of not only the Youth Service Bureau, but our careers uh, uh, at the agency and what has developed over really uh, the 50th year anniversary, uh, which was celebrated uh, last year in 2022. So welcome, Lynn. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So um, maybe we could start with uh, kind of some of your earliest memories of uh, when you came to the Youth Service Bureau. And uh, I think that was as a graduate student. Yes, it was. So that was back in, in 1980, and I was looking for a position, an internship, and just kind of found my way to the Youth Service Bureau. So, And of course, it was an amazing experience for me and to work with some very competent people. At that point, there were probably about four staff members, Okay. So, <laughs> in contrast to <clears throat> our larger agency today. Yeah, but uh, just a little bit larger. A little bit larger. <laughs> so, yeah, so I had an amazing experience. And at that point, there weren't any positions open, but I was very fortunate within a couple of years. My then boss, George Geis, mm -hmm. called and asked if I wanted to interview for a position. Right. Yeah. And uh, where was the Youth Service Bureau located at that time? Yeah, so we were in, I think it's called Crosswords. It's over, everybody knows the Home Goods, okay. so where the Home Goods store was, but it was up atop of Cal's Barber Shop. Okay. So, and I think Frisco Pub was over there. That's right. And yeah. That's so right. We may have had three or four offices in there. Right. Yeah. So actually, I... Uh, kind of uh, beat you to the punch on that because I did my Western Maryland College um, senior internship with the Youth Service Bureau in 1977. Uh, but then I didn't find my way back uh, until some uh, years later. Um, but once you uh, did your internship, then then what? Uh, what followed for you? Well, I, I, I worked at a kind of a part-time job for a little while and had uh, two, no, I had only had one child at that point. Okay. So I was raising Kristen and in, enjoying life a little bit, but knew I needed to get to work a little bit more, a few more hours a week. So, okay. So the job that George offered me was a part-time position and mm -hmm. it worked out with our family. And mm -hmm. um, so I, of course, took that position. And at that time, all the therapists were assigned to schools. So we really right. spent most of our time during the days within different schools. Right. Yeah. And uh, as I remember, you would see students in conference rooms or whatever might be available. Yes, yes. Um, we laughed about whether we were going to be put in the broom closet <laughs> at one point because schools were short of space, um, all that. But um, some of my schools were um, were Westminster Elementary and Winfield and South Carroll High, okay. at one point North Carroll High. But I'll never forget. I mean, these days are gone. But at South Carroll, I had permission to go on the intercom system and, and call, <laughs> <laughs> call my next student. Student uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I have to say the schools welcomed us with yeah. open arms. Yes, so. I remember yeah. those days very well. Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, from your undergraduate education, which was where? Well, that was at University of Maryland College Park. College Park. Mm -hmm. And then you went on to get your master's degree. Yes. At okay. Towson. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Uh, well, it was an I mean, it was an excellent education. I, I knew it then, but 
even seeing our intern classes come back year after year, many of our Towson students seem to kind of rise to the top. Mm-hmm. And nothing against all the other students, yeah. but they just, I think that the, the level of... Uh, of classroom instruction and mm-hmm. experiences is is still outstanding. Absolutely. And I was yeah. just going to say that has continued over many years. Yeah. And I think you would probably agree that some of our really standout program directors and clinicians are Towson graduates who yes, have they are. sort of followed in your <laughs> footsteps, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So, um, I, you were commuting uh, to Westminster, right, yes. for some years uh, before you and Rick and the family moved here. Yes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. You know, we I was living in Owings Mills at the time and then commuting up. And, and I, I know recently I told you the funny story that when the, when snows happened and, you know, and our boss was almost saying, you don't have to come to work. It was like, no, I'm going to work. <laughs> and two young kids at home. Right. And I just, I loved my work so yeah. much. So, so we would barrel up that road and um, another colleague of mine who lived down there, but we found ourselves drifting up towards uh, Carroll County for entertainment. I mm-hmm. mean, Hoffman's became a favorite, the mm-hmm. Duck Pond. We would go to Theater on the Hill at West mm-hmm. Maryland College at that time. Just found ourselves gravitating toward toward that small town feel. Yeah. And I had never had that in my life because I always lived in, in bigger areas. And I just found that I really loved it. I yeah. loved that sense of community. Yeah. And I, I've always... Um, had this picture of you as um, a, a working professional mom who was able to kind of integrate uh, your family and your professional life over a, a lot of years of pretty demanding work uh, at the Youth Service Bureau. Yeah, yes, and that was that was with help. My husband Rick has always been a very big force in our children's lives, mm-hmm. been pre- ever present. So, mm-hmm. and because he worked flexible schedule and worked a lot from home, he was able to you know, maybe put some things on hold once in a while. And certainly my, my nights, he was, he was always <laughs> home at night. So, and right. I worked a couple nights a week. So, yeah. but But also my mom helped out, and Mm. that was a tremendous benefit for our family. Yeah. 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 So, So, um, you know, you were raising children, integrating your professional life with community life, and um, then uh, uh, you became assistant director um, in, uh, do you remember what year that was approximately? Mm. because I have your your uh, executive director start time is 1998. That, that's about right, yeah. Okay. Um, so I would say maybe like eight years before that. Okay. Or six years, something like that. Okay. Yeah, that's six years before that, I would say. You know, uh, George Geist went to Department of Social Services. Yes, as I remember. As director there. And um, so we kind of shifted roles in our agency. But mm-hmm. um, but there was a point in time I, I kind of rose the ranks a little bit by, oh, golly, starting as a therapist, but then being in charge of uh, parent education. Mm-hmm. You and I, in 1999, did some of the first... Uh, Violence assessments That's right. for the school system, right? And prior to that, set suicide assessments for right. the school system, right? But so, and then into the uh, the assistant director role, and and there was a, a point in time where I could have said, or I did say, I pretty much done every role in this agency, mm-hmm. and that is so not true right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll get to that yeah, part in a minute, yeah, okay? Yeah. About what it's like now, okay, and the expansion and the comprehensive nature of services now. Um, So um, 
as things developed for you, um, what were some of the challenges and rewards of uh, all those years of uh, developing as a as a clinician, as an administrator, and ultimately as an executive director? Well, there certainly are rewards along the way, be they small or be they large. When I was a clinician, I mean, my rewards were found in the children that I worked with, mm -hmm. um, with the families that I worked with. I, I remember when I had to start I say I had to start because I was so nervous doing family therapy, and I thought <laughs> I know what I'm doing with the kids. Right, I'm not right. So sure about when you the bring parents. the parents in, yeah. right? Don't don't know more than I do. Right, so, right, right. But but really, truly enjoyed that work, and actually moving into administrative was was tough at times because yeah. just thinking about losing that connection, yeah. um, with the families, yeah. So I was able to find a little bit of those connections in some outside boards that I got involved in, like Habitat. Sure. I could work with the families who were searching for a new home and that kind of thing. But, yeah. but the rewards as, um, as an administrator, I, I have to say that I, I really, really loved that change. I love hearing the needs of our community and then sitting together with a group of skilled people from our community and building programs mm -hmm. and it's just so rich and so worthwhile yeah and just feels so so rewarding to yeah. me so and i think you and i know how unique that kind of collaboration is in this community if you look statewide or yeah. nationally i mean what's been carved out here in carroll county and more specifically how the youth service bureau um, engages with and interacts uh, collaborates with so many of the human service organizations here i, I agree and i think the the absolute benefit to that is the people we serve, the people right. in the community. And it's just, it's such a gift that Carol has. Mm -hmm. Having been on boards, statewide boards, and listened to other county mm -hmm. folks talk about the work in their community and the protection of their turfs and yeah. just the fact that they can't get somebody on the phone. And right. we just don't have that here. Right. I think everyone works towards the benefit of, of the residents of Carroll County. Yeah. And it's just, it's amazing to see the work that we can get done. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, in thinking about, um, and I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but in thinking about some of the things that I'm either most proud of or so happy about is all of our partnerships. The coalition building. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, and I am only allowed to do that because of all my partners. Yeah. You know, yeah. And their willingness to yeah. work together as well. Yeah. I just want to uh, comment briefly about the evol your evolution as a clinician, direct service provider into supervisory and administrative positions mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, your credibility as an administrator and ultimately as an executive director really ha has its roots in kind of uh, being sort of in the trenches, if you will, mm -hmm. and knowing what it's like to serve children and families and the challenges of that. Um, and I just uh, have so much respect for that integration uh, when I think about your career. Well, thanks, Gary. I, I, but I really, I, I truly believe that to have the trust of your staff mm -hmm. and, you know, you have to see that, that part of their work right. and how hard they work and how difficult and challenging sometimes their work is right. and keeping that in mind and doing things to, to, to foster that, to be able to not have them see 30 clinical hours a week or, you know, to burden them with, right. with, with more, more, more right. when you, 
you know, you, you can find a way not to do that. Right. So that they're happy to come to work. Right. Yeah. Right. And so there's a couple things I want to just add to what you're saying. Um, what I saw over the years with your leadership was uh, the development of people into different roles in the agency, that there were opportunities for growth and to move into being a field instructor or ultimately a program director. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of places where people feel kind of stuck and, and don't have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so, offering that vision for people to move uh, and develop um, in their own right and to build the, the team and the organization. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's really, in my opinion, has been sort of the norm, what I call the normative culture of the Carroll County Youth Service Bureau mm -hmm. and your leadership. Well, thank you, but I'm gonna say but, I'm always... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I feel pretty strongly that anyone who's in a leadership position, mm -hmm. their strongest asset is looking for other leaders and building other leaders. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a yeah. big part of their job. Right. Is bringing other people up. Right. By encouraging their good work, by helping them when they need assistance. Right. All the all the things that you need to do as a leader. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I know that certainly over the years, maybe you and I would have our worries about things. But by and large, uh, we felt pretty confident about the people that were running programs day to day and their expertise and their reliability and their competency to do that. Yeah. We did. We did. We yeah. always have felt that. Absolutely. Um, and and leaving or having left, I I feel that way now. Yeah. I just feel like the agency is in such such good hands. Yeah. Um. You know, part of the way that we're able to do that is, I think that we're very careful when we interview people and hire people as mm -hmm. much as we can be. Yeah. To 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 get the skills that we want, and right. then again to hone those skills as people move forward. Right. The internship program that you built is a, a great one for our, our teaching our interns right. um, at, to into the culture, right. into the skill level, into the integrity of other people in the agency. Absolutely. Yeah. They're Absolutely. a farm team, I always say. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. We move them fan. from AAA into That's the majors, right? That's right? exactly right. Yeah, and it's still yeah. going on, right? It, it is. It Absolutely. is to this very day. You yeah. know, I was a, I was over there yesterday and I see some new faces and I'm like, oh, my, who are you? It's nice to meet you. And, and they're like, oh, well, I was an intern last year and now yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah, we hired a couple of interns from yeah. last year, and that's yeah. that's the, the pattern we like to keep whenever yeah. possible. Absolutely. We see kind of who rises to the top and yeah. who's interested in yeah. a position, and then yeah. go forward. Yeah, yeah. So pretty, pretty unique, right? It's, it's a it's an amazingly unique group of people. It, it is. really is. Yeah. The uh, as I mentioned, the integrity, the skill level. I mean. They're just an amazing staff. They are. <laughs> right. So. I know. <laughs> and they're caring and compassion. Yes. So also yeah. goes First along. and foremost, the yes. genuineness to, yeah. to be there and to want to be in a helping posture mm -hmm. with people. And it's very difficult work, right? Yes. It can be very challenging work. Yeah. Yes. And, and sometimes you don't see, as a therapist, you don't see the growth as quickly as you'd like to see or yeah. people meeting goals or... But you have to be willing to hold back a little bit, to be patient with right. clients, and and help them where they where they come to us, and then help to help them move forward, even at a slower pace than you might like to see. For so, sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So there's one thing I want, one more thing I want to say about the evolution of the agency that maybe a lot of people in the community watching this may not know or fully appreciate. And that's how, uh, over a number of years, um, you and you and I together 
uh, work toward the concept of integrated systems of care mm -hmm. that, you know, we went from uh, a mental health clinic to integrating uh, treatment for substance use uh, disorders. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, are paying more attention to somatic care, uh, our psychiatric services. We certainly serve uh, people on the autism uh, spectrum. And so training therapists to really uh, work from that integrated uh, viewpoint or through that lens is something that's taken years uh, mm -hmm. to develop. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether you want to comment on that, but it, I think it's striking. Yeah, and another another population, we we are fortunate enough to have some people with developmental disabilities right. or intellectual disabilities right. on our client caseload as well. Exactly. And I think I, I think the, the adage of meeting people where they are frees you up to be able to work with all different kinds of people. Yeah. People don't have to come to us with a certain skill set or you know, or economic background or anything, really. Right. They right. come to us, you know, we assess them and work with them, get their ideas, their take on yeah. it all. And as you always like to say, look for their strengths right. and and work with them as they come to us. Right. Uh, it, you know, work in an engaging way with them and then develop goals that are their goals. Right. And I have to say that, uh, you know, I've spent some years uh, in the academic world, you know, teaching. Um, and I think that we were often ahead of academia in terms of our development of integrated services. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's something that followed in colleges and universities at the at the undergraduate and the graduate level in right. terms of preparing uh, social workers and counselors to think in those terms. Yes, I uh, agree. And I think that, I mean, when you look at it, it just makes good common sense. Oh, absolutely it, it does. I mean, why would you send a person to this agency and that agency and right. to have, you know, care from all different sides and no one right. communicating. And nobody communicating. Where right. you can do it in your agency. It's, you know, as people say, treating the whole person. Right. You know, looking at them right. with, with, with the, th the things that they want to change, but also looking at the things that are so good in them yeah. and, and, and working with the whole system whole person. You know, if you look at it, if, if a person has major somatic uh, care issues, right. how can you Me think that they're going to be able to sit and care about, you know, their family being right. able to communicate more or right. or if they have, um, you know, major uh, issues with around poverty yeah. and hunger right. and, you know, counseling is not going to be the first thing on their list. Right. So again, we try as best we can to either help meet those needs or do a warm handoff to, to people in the community who can help those right. kinds of needs. And, and you know, you talking about serving um, uh, uh, lower economic uh, families and clients, what percentage of uh, our clientele, the YSB clientele, are medical assistance mm -hmm. uh, recipients, Medicare and Medicaid? We're about 65% are okay. Medicare and Medicaid. And then, of course, there's that other 35 that is private insurance. Right. And, and uh, people want to come to the agency. Right. So, but, you know, for us in the community, we serve children along right. with adults and, right. Yep, right. and families. But so Sometimes we, people forget about the they, adult part. They do, but we, we have a, a high percentage of adults that we serve as well right. and programs that are specific to adults. So, right. yeah. Yeah. So um, how do you think clients, since we're talking about clients, uh, how do you think... Uh, They've changed over the years in terms of kind of the presenting issues and challenges that they're coming with uh, for help. Yeah. I think there are changes, and I think there are constants. Okay. Yeah. So, 
So certainly there have been changes since uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, we've definitely seen that, an uptick in, uh, in calls for help in for mental health as well as substance use so that definitely has uh been a strong influence right changed our world changed our world i think that one of the good things that you can say that's done is i do believe that it's relaxed the sense of stigma Mm. that's associated with mental health and substance use a bit Mm. i think we're on a good good traction for that. Yeah. And to me, that's such a critical part of people getting well is not having that stigma attached to your care. Right. A lot of people do not get care because of the stigma that's attached to it. Right. Yeah. So I feel like that's one thing that has changed a bit. Yeah. I think that the services that uh, that we provide to our clients we, I mean, we have five evidence-based treatments now mm-hmm. in the agency, and they are just for, you know, folks who may not know, they are proven effective in university settings. Research-based. Yeah, research-based. And they're, they're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they're hard for the yeah. clinicians. Yes. They're a lot of work. Yes. But they're worth it. Yeah. They are so worth it. And, you know, the, you know what we've seen with the outcomes of people who go through those treatments are just amazing. Yeah. One of the constants has been that as therapists, we still need to engage our clients. We need to do those basic things okay. with them that we have mm-hmm. always done. Always yes. grounded in relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. Forming those relationships with people. Uh, uh, being fortunate enough when, when people trust us mm-hmm. with this courageous thing that they've done. Right. And counseling can be a very courageous act yeah. for people. Um, it, it's hard work. So so those kinds of things, having the skills and the genuineness and, and all those things that, that make counseling such an impactful uh, discipline yeah. are, are still so important in, yeah. in people's lives. To the, to the fact that we have given our therapists permission to do more telehealth. Mm-hmm. And only a few of them really took us up on that. So <laughs> usually our therapists have one day a week with right. people who enjoy telehealth. And okay. find it a big benefit. But for the most part, they're, they're in coming the into office. the office. Yeah, they are. Okay. And I, you know, and I, I'm sure I'm a bit old school, but I think those personal touches are really important. Oh, it's that sense of community again, that sense of agency yes. and collaboration, right? And collegiality. Yes. All of that. Yeah. 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 Important components of the therapeutic uh, relationship. Yeah. 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 And the organizational culture. Yes. Yeah. 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 I could speak to that too. Yeah. (laughs) So (sighs) where do you see things going in the future? You know, you're... um, you're leaving your legacy after so many years, but I'm sure you have thoughts about what you'd like to see for the future. Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah. But, but also recognizing some of the things that we've built, you, me, all the staff, yeah. everyone there have built. And I mentioned the partnerships mm-hmm. um, that are just so valuable, but also the culture of right. CCYSB and just uh, people wanting to come to work every day. And that's important. And, you know, we don't always get things right, but when we don't, we go back and we figure out try. why and try yeah. to make them right. So that culture that's there yeah. is important. Our, our building that we built and moved into in 2009 gave us the opportunity to expand those services, which mm-hmm. is was wonderful. And I'll just throw a little plug in that we'll be building in addition. And, I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. In the next, uh, well, in the next couple of years. Right. So we'll, yeah. we'll be doing that. Yeah. Personally, uh, 
I know I'm going to get involved in things in the community mm-hmm. at, at some point. I'm yeah. going to give myself a little rest for okay. a month or two. And yeah. I have a new grandbaby coming. Oh, so, wonderful. So that's yes, that's exciting. right. Yes, my first. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So well, you're going to love it. I, I can attest to that. I know. Yeah. I know. So I'm very excited about yeah, that. That's wonderful. But Rick and I like to travel. So, mm-hmm. you know, not only across the sea, but in the United States and we'll We'll be doing some of that, but yeah. I, you know, I have a lot of activities that I like. You know, I'm going to mention my tennis that I yeah. love. Yeah, so yeah. I'll play. I'll get to play another game a week, so yeah. that's that's great. Mm-hmm. And I, I very much enjoy reading. I've already got colleges uh, bulletins out, looking at <laughs> courses. So, so that'll be fun. But yeah. but I really do enjoy reading and yeah. crosswords and you know, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, uh, well, I, I just have to say to you, and you've heard me say this to you before in recent years, you know, I mean, I left the Youth Service Bureau three years ago after 30 years, and I just have um, evolved into things that I just love and value, and yet I never forget where I came from, because that's really the foundation. Yeah. And, you know... Uh, <clears throat> All those years of working with you. Oh, thank you, Gary. And you yeah. know I feel the same way yeah. as well. So we had yeah. a we had a incredibly unique partnership. We did. We did. And yeah. and everything I learned, I learned at the youth service bureau. Yeah. So I, I feel the same way. Yeah. You know, we kind of grew up there and Yeah, um, we did. We're able to do some good things. Yeah. Think, so. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, wish you all the best and uh we will continue to have coffee and talk about <laughs> life after YSB, right? Yes, we will. Okay. We will. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you.